Hi, it's five and we're live. What do you get when you cross DIYs, countertops, mentorship, do it yourself, colors, craziness, and fun? Put it at Tuesday night, put it in a blender, you get tonight live at five. Stay tuned, enjoy the video. Remember, when you subscribe to our channel, click on the red subscribe button and be sure to ring the bell so you get notified every time we have a new video. Thanks again. Hey guys, welcome to our live video. We are with a very good friend, Ken Guerra. What's up, my friend? I'm just ex excited to be here. I've wanted to do this for years. Catherine and I have known you and your family for many years. Yeah. You're near and dear to our heart. Let's talk about how we met and I guess how many projects we've done together and for you. Right. Well, well, I have stone coat countertop in a rental house. Okay. We have stone coat countertop in our second house on the river. Okay. And we have stone coat countertop at my office. Yes. Yes. And, uh, we absolutely love the product. I, I love with all the colors and all the things that you do. And I've been wanting to do something. I had these old tables and I thought, I, I want to do something, but Mike wouldn't let me do it on my own. No, no, <laughs> you, you, so you love our videos and, I love and your videos. I got to tell you guys this, this man right here, he's, he's a mentor to me. Uh, he's, he's known my wife and I for many years. He's given us, um, a lot of great direction and advice, uh, personal business, financial, spiritual, everything in between. And I just love this man, but he's on our videos supporting us all the time. And he's uh, had us do projects, but you've never once touched. I haven't touched our products. So I, I haven't live. You're gonna see him either make or break your personal. Your 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 whole reputation. A lot of pressure, Mike. Is on right now. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> so if you guys ever see Ken, what what's your name on? What what do people put? What, what where will they see you in the comments? Is it Ken G? Is that how you log in or? in the in oh, I don't or know, in like the I don't know I don't see that okay I don't well, see we, it on your side we've seen you post we'll have to look that up okay. and then we'll point it out but guys give him a hand let's go let's root for Ken we're gonna make two tables that these were a little sadder than we have them right now aren't they they were they were ugly yeah they were been stored in my garage for like a long time I don't even know where they came from you know what, how garages are what do you think of this honey? you know what's gonna happen I have I have an idea. I okay. think whatever child left them in your garage is going to start claiming them after a project today. Yeah, well, they're going to want them back. I think they're going to start getting phone calls, right? <laughs> I think be. you're going to be, know. I don't know. But They'll probably fight over them. Finders I keepers. Sell them. Back to them. Yeah. For rent. That, so, that's good. <laughs> so you came in. We were teaching a class last week. You yep. came in. You tried to sneak in here and buy epoxy. I, I caught you. I said, nope, you're doing a live with me. You, you brought these tables. We got them prepped. They look different than you brought them. Can we show the audience, Mitch? Are you prepped to show the audience what we did to these tables earlier today? I'm totally ready. You ready for that? Well, while you're doing that, I'm going to mix up some materials so we're, re we're ready. And stay tuned to the end of the video because we're going to announce that you got this award for this week. So hang on. Check out how we fix these and we'll be right back. These two end tables have certainly seen better days. In this video, we're going to show you start to finish how we prep these to receive a brand new facelift. We'll detach the tops from the bases to make it a little more simple. We'll store our hardware in a safe place so it's right where we want it when it's time to put these tops back on the bases. Part of these tables are made out of particle board and so it's swelled up a little bit over time and has some high points. The first thing we're going to do is take our 50 grit metal sanding disc and remove these high points. Let's get prepped. Safety first. As we're removing these high points, we're simply going to use circular motions and that metal sanding disc, which really removes material quickly. It doesn't matter if these are rough, we're going to cover it with stone coat countertop epoxy, but all we're doing here is just removing those high points and then we'll fill in this decorative saw curve. I'm also going to remove any of this excess black paint. This was just done with house paint, so we're going to remove that so we get a really good bond. Blow that dust off, you're ready for your next step. We're going to use our all-purpose Bondo putty. We're going to use some gloves, our hardener, our opener, as well as a spatula. We'll mix that up and we're ready to fill this saw kerf in so we get a nice flush surface to make this old wood top look like a piece of stone. Don't worry, your Bondo work doesn't need to be perfect. You're going to sand those excess ridges off anyways. Mitch has something to say. Crappy to cool. Crappy to cool. They probably want to saw my eyeball there. 
Now that our Bondo's all set up, it's time to sand those ridges with our 50 grit metal sanding disc. All we're doing is just trying to get it nice and flush. We don't care about the look because we know we're going to paint this with Paint and Primer in one to prep it for our project. After we sand the top of the surface, we're going to switch to our random orbital sander. We're also going to sand these edges and remove any of that excess paint so we get a nice clean bond with our final stone coat product. Next, we got to find out what our customer wants these tables to look like. I'm calling Ken. Hello? Hey, my brother. How are you? Good, I'm working on your tables. Oh, cool. Yes, they, they're perfect. Uh, it was so good because they were really bad. <laughs> yeah, they were, well, they've been out in the garage for a couple of years. So were you going to toss these? Were you, was that the plan or were you going to eventually refinish them? What was, what was the plan for them? to clean out my garage and, and you know with, with so many kids I have I was hoping that uh, one day some kids might need some furniture nice I, look, I looked at them they're so ugly I thought well, Mike can help me make them look good <laughs> so are we still on for the live tonight you still good with that yeah okay sure. yes definitely I'm stoked and and I was gonna call you I was actually calling you to figure out uh, what color you want to do or do you care or we got a preference or what's your plan for the color of these you know, I don't have a plan. I, 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 uh, I just want to make them look better. Okay. Well, that'll be easy. <laughs> so what, what time should I be there? Um, we go live at 5, so probably no later than 4.45, and then we'll be all ready to rock. All right. All right. That's cool. I'll we'll be ready. You. It'll be a surprise then. Uh, it, it'll be a surprise, I'm sure. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. I don't, You're gonna... I don't know what to expect, but well, something will happen. I know that. You know, whatever happens, everybody will know about it immediately because there's no editing. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. you okay, bye. It's always great when you have license to do whatever you'd like on a project. So now we're ready to paint this with paint and primer in one. It's tinted in natural gray. We have a great base. We're all prepped. It's time to have a blast and get the epoxy started. Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did enjoy that precursor to how we got this project ready, feel free to hit that like button. We appreciate that, right? You got something to say, hon? I wanted to thank our team. Our team is here. We got Patrick and Shay here tonight, and I wanted to say thank you guys. Make sure that you give them some love and sh shout them a hello. I know lots of you guys have talked to them on our customer service team. They're amazing, and I just want to thank them. So thanks so much for staying tonight with us. And now you know to be careful when you call me on the phone. I see that. Because I'm going to record it and put it out live, right? <laughs> I could have given Nothing national secret. Right. I'm yes. in trouble. Yes. Right? Uh, so we're ready. Now these aren't perfect. You can see there's still imperfections. You can still see some of the wood grain, that kind of thing. And that's one of the biggest unlocks when you're starting a project like this is not to be afraid. Punch perfectionism in the face. It doesn't need to be perfect when you start because okay. we're going to end up with really nice finishes when we're done. So this is just a good, it's sealed. We got our paint primer in one, but now we're going to sand off the little high points. So I'll do mine. Okay. You're going to work on this one. I'm going to, I'm going to do this one. You're going to do okay. that one. And we're going to see if they're matching set when we're done. Okay. And if they're not, we'll just throw them back in your garage. Uh, that's all right. <laughs> yeah. right. Don't get lost like they have been. And all I do is just, just quickly get rid of any high points. You feel how the edges are a little bit, sometimes they're a little rough, like feel right here how it's kind of rough. Yeah. All I'm doing is just a quick, we don't want to take off too much of that paint, but we're just making it smooth. If, if you've got really rough edges, it tends to create surface tension where the epoxy doesn't want to roll over. Okay. Now I'm going to wipe my dust while you get yours down there. How long have these tables been in your family? I, well, I have not, I don't even know where they came from. I, oh, well. <laughs> they, were, they were just ended up in my garage. The mystery table. Yes. All right. You right can wipe that dust off. Um, Mitch, we got a really good, uh, we got a really good, you got this award picked out this week, you told yeah, me. we sure do. I can't wait for that. Guys, be sure to stay tuned for that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you let me know when to roll on that. I think it's awesome. We got some epoxy mixed up. Um, what we're going to do, so, so we mixed this up while you guys were watching that clip. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. Because we're going to do a lighter color, I went with our art coat because it has enhanced UV protection. So if this is right near a window or in the blazing sun, you're going to have more protection against UV. Okay? okay. So that's what we're doing. And then we're going to add a little bit of our white base tint. Uh, okay. this, is, this, uh, this only needs to be used 
sparingly. It really goes a long way. Um, people ask all the time, well, what's the max I could put in? Your max you want to do is about two ounces per quart. There's eight ounces in here. Everything's designed to be used with a whole gallon of epoxy. So I'll shake that up and I'll show you how precise this has to be. Okay. Boom, right there. Oh, okay. All right. So that's I, how I much. think I could even do yes. that. Yes. Right. Now Mitch, Mitch had a great uh, suggestion and we actually have a link on our Amazon tool links. Artists that are going to use this over and over in just small amounts, put it in ketchup squeeze bottles. We learned that from you guys. We have a link on our site where, where we really like a certain squeeze bottle Mitch found, but love that idea. Have, yeah. you, heard, have you heard about that yeah, idea? Yeah, actually, I was going to be doing a video on that pretty coming up. Do you want uh, to mix that good. in? You you we'll, get, we'll, give that, okay. we'll give that to the boss man. So the cosmetology <laughs> bottles, too, um, any of those, I we decided not to do that for you guys because I found with our artists, they're very particular about the utensils that they use. Uh -huh. And some of them like certain bottles, some of them like a different one. And so instead of deciding that for you, just go on and find your favorite one. And just when you get it, put it in there and go to work. So, so fun. So one thing I wanted to try on this is I wanted to incorporate some of our diamond dust. Okay. This diamond dust is really cool because in this particular recipe, it's not gonna be so noticeable until it hits the sunlight. And, oh. and you know how some stones, it almost crystallizes in the light yeah. where it, it's muted out and then light hits it and boom. Yeah, it stands out. Oh, that's, that's what excellent. this will do. Yeah. Okay. So I don't think you're gonna wanna give this to your kids when you're done. I might not want to. All right, so I'm gonna. Do I stir it in the same way? You, you stir it in, you got it. It really, everything oh, is right. designed it's to, to... It's so yeah. awesome. Yeah. It, it it's like it my easy. favorite, favorite, one of our favorite nicknames. You're going to go home today and your wife's going to wonder why you have glitter all over you. Joanna's well, going to be like, you have such a sparkly personality. <laughs> well, so beautiful. I don't think she'll say that. Well, I bet she will. I think <laughs> I look pretty prettier awesome. when diamond dust is on me. Uh, you do. Yeah. I, I think you uh, get out of trouble with that diamond dust on you sometimes. Is that good? Yeah, yeah, I okay. like it. Hey guys, did you guys see Mitch's? Uh, Mitch, you said this is going from what to what? Crappy to cool. Crappy to cool. Yes. Did you guys like that, Mitch? Mitch? <laughs> Mitch? Man, you look at look at Ken's head is out of the frame. How tall are you? I'm five feet eighteen inches tall. No, five feet eighteen. <laughs> I've got my boots on, so I'm. Yeah, you did that on purpose. You have confidence. I gotta stand I own up. That height. I love All right, that. you're good. I okay. just wish I would have brought my boots. All right. All right. So that you can see. So what I like to do is see how opaque it's gonna be because you can see how much it's hiding the, the lettering on uh -huh. the stick. So that will show you. And then you see like the little sparkles that are starting to show. Oh, yeah. So that's why Especially we put that in. on the other side where the light's hitting them. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Booyah. Done. All right, so I'm gonna mix mine out and then you're gonna do the same thing and we'll just do step by step. Okay, cool. You're, you're getting a private class. I, I love it. All right. Boom. That doesn't happen oh, yeah. ever. We'll give you some boom right there. It looks like pancakes to me. Yes, it, it, we're making really fancy pancakes. All right. We've yeah. actually made pancakes, pancakes together, haven't we? Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, clarify that real quick. Why would you have done that? Because we work with young, young, <laughs> young scouts. There you are. <laughs> yes. And you just right. don't want us getting trouble. I, I was okay. making sure it was okay. real clear so, why. <laughs> so when when I trowel this out, I'm not pushing it over the edge. Okay. Not yet. I'm going to do that last. I'm going to get most of the body. And, and it's light pressure with that trowel, but the trowel gauges it on the surface for me so that I know it's all going down at the right thickness that I have enough for it to actually level out. Okay. But I'm also going to do a second coat. So one big thing that I teach brand new folks at this is you know you're going to do a second coat, so I'm not so worried about having a perfectly flat surface. I'm mainly worried about the decoration, the look, what I'm going for, and then my clear coat is going to overcome dips and nibs and nubs and any imperfection. Okay. So boom, I got that. I'm gonna now just kind of see the rest of it. I'm just gonna slightly get it running over that edge. And you got a cool, a lot of people ask us about a bull nose edge, uh -huh. which you already had on this table. So I was really glad you're letting us do this because it'll show you can do a bull nose. Mm -hmm. Okay, Great. there you go. There you are, my friend. So. There you go, yeah. Doing great, yeah. Spread it around. Mike makes it look so easy. Well, you're doing it. You're making it look easy now. There you go. Oh, look at, see, you can see the little, little sparkle in it. I, I, I'm oh, a fan of sparkles. You wouldn't think I love sparkles, you're but I good. do. Keep going, you're it's doing just enough stuff. sparkle. Yeah. And, and the diamond dust, you know, Mitch had been playing around with the different, um, the gold dust, and it came through an opaque red, right, Mitch? Yes, sir. Yes, it sure did. It was awful. It was crazy. Hold it. 
Like red, you would think, would be the one color to uh, cover everything, and uh, it shined through. Right, pretty. right. So I'm going through after I chop my surface, and I'm just going to go over the edge now. You're doing good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I keep going down too low, huh? So how we how we design that trowel? You'll like this. You'll like this. Mike, I got a question. Sure. Okay, we got a question. Um, John asks, "Can I add pigment to bondo for additional depth?" Usually, whenever we're gonna put bondo down, we're gonna paint primer right over that, so we omit adding any tints to it. But I have added a universal epoxy tint to bondo. It will take the color, but usually you're gonna cover a bondo anyway, so it's kind of unnecessary to tint it. But uh, test it beforehand. I use 10x universal epoxy tint uh, to do that. Know what I'm saying? Yeah. There you perfect. You're a journeyman yeah. chopper already. Very good. All right. Very nice. Well, I don't know about that. Well, Are you nice. having fun yet? Is this, this is enjoyable? Great. I love it. I've been wanting to do this for so long. You're now a movie star, too. Up and in. Right. Not in a line. Oh. Up and around. Random. Oh, that's right. Don't let Mike distract you with his don't awesome conversation. I am, I am, I am distracted. <laughs> yes. He's a great conversationalist. This is my first time, Mike. Come on. <laughs> don't, don't, make this, don't make this too hard. You're doing awesome. Am I pushing down too hard? That's yeah, perfect. Perfect. And all that I does like it is looks. Yeah. it looks like clouds. Then you're going to take the side, you're going to kind of turn it all the way like this, and okay. then you're going to just kind of go around the edge. Amanda, great question. She asks about using our products for an RV or tiny house. Was wondering how they perform as far as flexibility when traveling and weight compared to the traditional countertops. So a two gallon kit of epoxy weighs 20 pounds. So that's enough to do 40 square feet, well more than any RV countertop you'll have. So weight is not an issue when it comes to installing with uh, Stone Coat countertops in your RV or tiny house. Also, there is a uh, flexibility to the epoxy, so you're uh, you're safe there. It won't crack or fracture as you're driving down the road. Okay, I'll go around there and do that for those front. Make sure the front edges are good. That was a great question about our, the RV question too. I like that. Did and I miss anything on that? No, you you nailed it on the head. The only thing is is, is you can go over your old existing in your RV. Or you can make new, so if you were worried about weight, you can go over some, but, but being as lightweight as it is, it's, it's a perfect application for RVs, for, for airplanes, for things like that, that you are worried about weight. Uh, guys in pontoon boats have used this on, on for their countertops. It's pretty cool. All right, we're ready for the next step. There you are. Okay. So at this point, you can torch, but we don't need to because we're going to torch a lot at the end. Okay. Uh, we're going to just start. Now, this is the part that I love because people, oh, see what Catherine did? Let me actually show you. Let me see that trowel. So that trowel, we put the bend in this to show people the wow. angle that you should trowel. And it makes out. a nice pattern. It does, exactly, yes. It does. So it's that's awesome. like how we trowel it. And okay. then when we put it like that, the drips run away so we could reuse this over and over. Why? Okay. What? Can, can you because you don't want those drips clogging those teeth. Okay. So you just set it up like that. Right, we're gauging the material. Oh, We right. consistently gauge the material. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some stripes. I call these jail stripes. We're going to okay. create a jail cell here. Okay. And we're going to be behind bars. Okay, are you thinking I'm crazy yet? Um, no, I'm just making me nervous to be behind bars. All right, <laughs> here we go. And see, I went over that front edge. Yeah. And I'm close to the thing, so we don't get a ton of overspray. Okay. Okay, your turn. Looks and like jail bars. And watch the front of your shirt, because uh, you might get a little bit of Well, you got long arms. You're good. Yeah. Oh, you're perfect. That, That's perfect. Straight line? Oh, I mean, oh no, you're, you're okay. good. You're, you're good. good. That oh, part's just going to be there. totally ruined. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch, be nice. This is first Come time. Come on, Mark. Perfect. You're I'm only allowed scared. to do that to hey, see if you I got, got, got drips or uh, spots and you didn't. Oh, oh you're, you know he what? Has, he has them. He's just not hit the glove. Chrome. Oh. Ready for chrome? Yeah. All right. That's one of my favorite colors. Because it sits like on top. Yeah. Like a zebra stripe. Yeah, now we're a zebra. Now we're a referee. Ta -da. It's good. It's all good. good. 
Okay, and then finally, Your aluminum. Hand. Aluminum. Aluminum linoleum. Why have Are you going right over the top? I am. Crazy Ivan, give us a call tomorrow. I'd be more than happy to discuss what's going on there with yeah. all your questions. 541-450-1976. Uh, Ask for Mitch. I'd be more than happy to help you out. Stuff in the air. <laughs> I think I missed the edge. Did I get the edge okay? You're all right. You're all right. You're doing good. Okay, okay put right. a little bit of black in there. Just, just a little uh, bit random? No, yep. just the stripes. Same, just like I did. Okay. In the same spot. Anywhere. It doesn't matter. Oh, it doesn't matter? I like this part. Very okay. nice. All right, so I'm going to go to the other side, and you're going to stay on this side. We're going to we're going to okay. work together. Ooh. It's interesting how the color. Yeah, like right. That. Some of it goes to the top, and some of it kind of gets buried. Yeah. Right. So He's about that. to use it. You different. twist one way. I'll twist this way. Okay. There you go. Okay. Now, when you do this technique. You really don't want to do straight lines, but you won't, don't want to go too steep either. Okay. So I'll let you set your end. Go ahead. Anywhere. Oh, just right. Yep. Yeah, right there's good. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm just going to kick it a little bit like this. Okay. We'll set it, and we'll just tap, pick it up. Set it again. Boom. I'll come here. Tap, pick it up, and go ahead. I'll just follow wherever okay. you're setting. I'm going to adjust for you, and we're going to tap the whole. Oh, okay. oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Okay. Nice. Mike was trying to. I was shortchanging him. I, I was it. I was hogging the hogging the rope. I was thinking. So one thing me. about this technique is this tool is rather expensive. Piece the, of painter's plastic, plastic right. you know. Yeah. So you got to you got to count that into your budget. Oh, okay. At least thirty cents. All right. So let's keep sure. going. We're okay. gonna we're gonna do this on the entire surface. Do you want me to tap? Me sure. Yeah. Help me tap that in. Yep. Just good. Tap it in. Tap tap. Tap tapity tap tap. And only come up that far. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, you're good. Because you're going to splash yourself with epoxy. And then you're going to be like, Catherine, you wrecked my shirt. Well, you know, I have a lot of shirts. You will have the memory. No matter what. <laughs> See, we're on the same. We're, we're, let's go to this very end. This, There you go. Cool. Okay, we're going to break up all this silver. Now see how what it's doing is it's tapping through that top color. Uh -huh. It's going down to the base color tint, and it's it's breaking this color up in a real natural pattern. And we just love this technique. It's very easy to replicate. We've done this with a lot of different colors, oh. and we've tried this in our class with white. And I really really like the outcome. So I knew you would. I know you're a rock guy. You collect rocks, I right? I love rocks. Yeah, and I'm, so, I'm kind of a rock fanatic. So you're you're a guy who can appreciate a wild and crazy rock yes. and how hard it. Okay, let's kill this one here. There we go. Perfect. Well, that's one of the things that fascinates me about stone code is that you make it look like rock. People, yes. People come in my office and they look at our counter and they say, "What is this? So now it looks I'm, like rock." I'm gonna steal this from you. Okay. And I'm just gonna now do it myself because you're gonna you're gonna finish your piece the same way. And just see how I'm going to anything that's open still. Uh -huh. And I'm not going like this. Okay. I'm just kind of breaking up the leftover spots that are kind of still showing. Boom. I'll hit that. And I'm happy with that. Okay. Let's do yours. Now, you, right. now I'm going to set mine this time. <coughs> and you're going to you're gonna adjust okay. to the angles, okay? You're going to tap it or are you going to tap it? Uh, we both will. Okay. You have to be careful not to tap the surface, huh? And I'll set mine first. Oh, and then sorry, you, sorry. Yep, you're good. And you can tap the surface. It's okay. Really? It'll just destroy oh. it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't follow instructions very well. You keep telling me you're going first. Oh, that's right. I am going first. He just got, yeah. Okay, you pull your end a little. I keep pulling it oh, from okay. you. Okay, good. I just you, want to see oh, how far, I go first. I'm far, first far away from you. Right? I know. Focus. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to start having like background music every so often. I know, we totally what? need background music. Uh, you guys got quiet, I thought we lost audio. Maybe maybe <laughs> oh. maybe Mitch should start singing for us. You can start oh, being boy. our background music. Come on, Mitch. <laughs> I, I, heard, I heard Mitch sings really well. He does. I, I he has do. a great voice. I, I I miss what he's saying on And he enjoys it. Online. Yeah. And we, we do really fun. big pieces with the same technique and it translates to a big piece. And it's actually a lot of fun with the group. It'd be a great family project, you know? <laughs> All right, I'm going to give you the whole thing. Okay. Just to go ahead and finish off your any spots that you need to to make it look. See how mine's broken up almost all over it? Yeah. 
That's what you're I looking think. to do. Yep, you're good. Just just wild and crazy on that thing. <laughs> it really doesn't take much pressure, does it? No. No, it's you pulling that really... white up and enveloping the color that we've sprayed on. Okay. I'm gonna go so if you did it too much, would it just turn into a blob? Um, well, what happens is the spray paint, uh -huh. Rust-Oleum in particular, it reacts with the epoxy and the base color to kind of, so you'll muddy it and then they automatically want to separate anyways. Okay. So the more you move it, sometimes it's even better. So you got to play kind of, if you do that with metallics too much, it will, it'll all come one color, but depending on what additives you're using will give you a different look. Yeah, it's on the all right, I'm gonna grab. Um, I'm gonna grab the heat gun. Okay. And we got the torch. But I'm gonna do it more. No, I think you're good. Okay. I think you're good. Let's uh, let's just, let's just set that right here on the plastic. It's fine. So what I'm gonna do now is really get in here and just start moving this material a little bit. This softens up lines. It's, it's gonna heat it up for me. Break. You, you're, what I'm trying to do is break up. The paint, uh -huh. see how it breaks it up? Yeah. I'm breaking that up oh, okay. anywhere I can, and it'll it'll make it look a lot more natural. So the thing about heat guns is that it warms up, right? When you first start blowing your hair, it's not always hot, but with the heat gun, I don't, I don't have well, I don't have all right. Well, okay. well, the heat gun will get hot. Slowly. But you can see, see how much more faster it's moving than it was when you first started over here? Yeah. So you kind of just need to start paying attention to it. I'm just going through here and mowing the lawn. Now if you look at what I've done, see how much more natural that looks, even the more that you move it? It's a little softer. Yeah, it starts to marble fly it. Guys, let us know. Do you guys like this technique? Is it something that you would want to try yourself? Let us know in the comments below. Quite a few people have uh, commented that they've done this on their kitchen with different colors, and it turns out awesome. What's the colors that they are their favorite? Uh, coppers. Cool. Oh. So oh, we coppers. haven't shown this with the white yet, and I thought it'd be really valuable for people to see, think outside the box. and. Uh, you were talking about doing your own kitchen. Yeah. So this gives you another idea of just how easy this really goes. But another thing that I like about working with our stuff is you got plenty of time. We're not in a hurry, right? We can, so now I've done that. It's your turn. Well, while you do that, I'm gonna tilt mine. So I'll tilt mine just to give it a little more realism, all right? You ready, Mitch? Yeah. So all I'm doing is just sliding it back to kind of where it was. I go back and forth a, a couple times, and it makes all those spray paint lines just not perfectly straight. It makes it look more real. So if you can't tilt your piece, that's okay. You can do it with heat and heat gun and air and all that stuff, but that's starting to look really nice. Okay. Wow, these are going to be sweet. That is amazing how much it's changed from the soaking. Right. Well, I'm just going through just anything that's still wrinkled. As, see how that paint's wrinkled a little bit? Uh -huh. I'm just torching that. Don't be afraid to get that heat on a little closer. There you go. Oh, great. Oh, yeah, that makes a difference. Nice. No, it really moves well. Because yes. it's been hot three times, right? So it yeah. depends on how, much you're, how far over you're moving each time. Some spray paint colors really like to sit on top of the surface. And when they do, this technique works good, but you, you can't underwork that material. If you just left it blobs of spray paint, it looks, looks weird, you know? You're doing cool. perfect. Nice. I love the way it moves. Yes. Right. Really... Stone. Oh, that's a good title right there. That came from Chris. Nice. All right, so now while it's warm, okay. I'll yeah, tilt that this way, let it start running. This way? Uh-huh, let it run, and before it all runs off, we're gonna tilt it back. Just so move. Grab it here? Yep. 
Oh, it's slippery. Yeah. Go, go even steeper if you can. There you go. This is this is awkward. It is awkward. See how it's moving? Yeah. Let it move. Okay, now move it back to move those blobs back. If I can hold on to it. You need help? No. <laughs> now I'd stop right there. Okay. And then I'd torch these wrinkles out, but it will have made it much more natural. It'll okay. Move. Torch all the all the wrinkles out, and you're about done. So. See how that's wrinkled? Just get that torch real close. There, there you go. Oh, wow. See how it okay. irons that out? Oh, right away. This is the part I wanted to do. You just you like, like playing with fire, fire, huh? Well, well yeah. You well, are a little bit. Yeah. Every boy. Like, like, so you like. took me to the sand dunes. Yes, I and did. And you, you were one of the craziest quad riders I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> you haven't seen a lot of quad riders. <laughs> Yeah, we have to go to the sand dunes again soon, Mike. Yes, again. yes. Oh, There's God, great sand dunes Oregon. here in Oregon. Where were those that we what is that Bandon? Is that where we went? Uh Florence. We were up at Florence. Florence, gotcha. Yeah. So you just melted those all the way. See that? That's it. Very good. We're done. So let me show you one thing. See this how it's kind of floating? Yeah. So I'm gonna show you on my piece. Let me see that. You're gonna wanna get that torch going. Circle in until you break that up. This piece right here? Uh-huh. And okay. then back off. Like, break it up and then back off. I call it touch and go. Okay. Because if you leave it too long, you'll burn the epoxy. Okay. There you go. Just like that? Yep. Perfect. See how that looks more natural? Yeah. Yeah, bright, bright, bright yep. out some of the other color yes. underneath. Yes. Yeah. So I just, I just evaluate, and I think... You might benefit a little bit of that right there. See how it just kind of looks a little man-made right yeah. there? I'd, I'd break that up just a hair. Nice. Perfect. You're swirling it. That's good. So it's smoking. Is that when it's burning? That's okay. No, nope, you didn't do too okay. much. What will happen, too, we see people who take our class and ha haven't had, had the chance to work with us a lot. A lot of people want to move everything at once. And you notice how it'll heat up and it'll really start moving once it's warm. Yeah. If you'll work it, kind of back off for a second and come back, it'll move a lot better. But what people do is try to move everything all at once and they'll create a scab. It'll get uh, hard right there and they think they've ruined their piece. But when you sand it the next day and clear coat it, what happens? Totally good. Or the other option is just to take a fork. So if that happens and you end up with it discolored or something else, you maybe are doing a lighter piece, mm -hmm. you can take a fork, like a plastic fork, get underneath it, scoop it right up and out, and then do it again with a oh, different wow. color right on top. Yeah, so you have soft like this. So it, yeah, right now. Like if I was to have done that, maybe not with this piece, but let's say I was doing a career marble piece and yeah. I over torched and it ended up kind of crispy, like a marshmallow. You know, sometimes I have people scoop it out, throw it out, and then they just go back and redo their marble so it's optional whatever cool. you need to do is cool all right so i'm curious if anybody watching has noticed that this is the one that we did with these same colors this is what our class did and boom this is what we did pretty cool it, it, it yeah. would match in the same house right yeah. go in the same kitchen so i'd say these tables are a perfect match this is great end table great first time you crushed it out of the park, man. That was that's easy. easy. That was awesome. That was so easy. Super easy. I love it. So, what are your thoughts? How how was that for you? Um, I'm just I'm amazed at what we created in such a short period of time. You're not gonna hire me anymore. <laughs> you're not gonna hire I, me anymore. I think you told me you're not gonna do it for me. Anymore. <laughs> no. I think you're a little busy doing. No, your just stuff. just bring them in. We'll do it for okay. live, right? right. <laughs> bring them in. Uh, Mitch, did you want to go ahead and uh, show the You Got This Award winner for this week? Sure. Sure thing. So Brenda Wilson, good job. She's a member of our Stone Coat Insiders since August 9th, uh, pretty much since the beginning. Take a look at some of her stuff. She um, is an artisan that coats multiple different wow. things. And uh, I think she sells them. I've been following her for a long time and watching all her amazing projects but check out some of these things she does a lot of cutting board cheese boards artwork uh, not that she is outstanding brenda thank you so much for all your uh, wow. sharing your beautiful work with us you really do an amazing job um i would love to share with our uh, viewers your website to pick up these items so when you call on in tomorrow to give us your address for the you got this award 
uh, be sure to let me know your website. But look at her stuff. She's wow. absolutely amazing. Just it's a little soap jar. Yeah. Wow. So thank you, Brenda. Good work. Brenda, those are amazing. That is yeah. uh that 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 shows you can tell that she's really honed her craft. She's got her niche, she's worked with different projects, and those are simply gorgeous. Yeah, my favorite my favorite syndrome, I have to call it is the stone coat syndrome, when you start walking around and going, What else can I stone coat? So yes. it is a little contagious, I'm not yes. gonna say. So once you start stone coating, you really it opens your mind to what you can do. And I love what you did. Good job. Good job. So Brenda. You got this. Yeah. Congratulations. Okay, that brings me to my next point of business. Dad, can you throw me that shirt that's sitting on the uh, table there? Actually, I better. Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, it'll, it'll, yeah, it'll, it'll be a pancake right in the. Uh... I got you on camera, Pops. Say oh, hello. Pops, I gotta say hi to everybody, man. <laughs> I know. So, uh, I gotta say, first of all, thank you for everything you've always done for me, man. Uh, we, we, we truly love you and uh, appreciate everything that you've, you've, you've really rooted for us and helped me in this business, helped us with so much advice. Uh, uh, that's my shirt. That's all you earned right there is a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I love uh, it. That's, 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 I don't even need that. I get these. Nobody has ever done this the least amount of square footage and earned that you got this award. Oh. So, so you're getting the, oh. that is your first piece. You crushed it. But more than that, you helped us build this thing from the, from the beginning, man. Thank you. Love you. Love you guys. This is, this is my man. So you guys give him a big thumbs up on there. And uh, here, I, I'll even, you're like, you're like, there you go. You had to come down to my level. How's, how's the air down here? <laughs> Do you have anything to say before we sign off? No, this is really fun. I, I, I think I have that syndrome already, Catherine. About, right. I, out of the cabin, I see all this cool burl wood, and yes. I want to make stuff out of it. Yes. So I'm looking forward to doing that. That's, you did in the shower out there. I did. I didn't I didn't use epoxy on it, but I yeah. did fill in the yeah, So cool. Showers. You started kind of taking that and adopting it in other places. That yeah. was so neat. Yeah, that's so. what I want to do. So yeah. thank you very much. This has been so fun. Yeah. Mitch, you got anything to say before we head out tonight? Yeah, from listening to you guys, I think we got a new show. Will it epoxy? <laughs> Will it epoxy? <laughs> I like that. Well, we saw on those beautiful cheese boards and the beautiful art and all those projects. I think the answer is yes. Yeah. Uh, guys, thanks for joining us tonight. Visit us anytime at StoneCoatCountertops.com. Call anytime for free project support. And until next time from Stone Coat Countertops, you got this. We'll see you soon on the next video. <laughs> right on. Thank you. Thank you. That was fun. That was awesome, man. Oh.